Hello React Native Developers, I hope you are well. William here recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. What attracted me in React Native in the first place was the fact that you could come in with web development skills. If you knew how to build a modern JavaScript application, you could build a React Native app. If you knew how to do a layout in CSS, you could do a layout in React Native. And then I learned to love the APIs which are specific to React Native. That attraction became so strong that now I like to reuse these APIs back to the web using React Native Web. And today I would like to talk about my favorite API, the Transform API. I find it to be the most elegant API available in the React Native ecosystem. And yet it might be the most misunderstood one. Let's have a look. I'm curious, George. I hop in the Porsche, five and a horse. I'm ready for war. I'm coming for throws to turn to a ghost. I need to know everything. In this video, I would like to show you two kind of advanced transformations: transformations of origin and 3D transformations. Here, I have three cards which are overlaid on top of each other: card one, card two, card three. And maybe so we can see each card. We can spread them out using a simple transformation, a translation on the y-axis. So this is the card which is at the bottom of the stack. I can translate to 50 points and for the top card, minus 50. So if you are a newcomer to the translate API, to the transform API, you will notice already that we need to wrap the transformation into an array that immediately suggests that the order of transformation really matters and that's what we're going to look at. So here we can see each card and maybe what I want to do is to fan out the cards. So instead of doing a translate Y, I'm going to do a rotate on the Z axis of let's say 30 degrees. So mat.py is 180 divided by 6 should give us 30 degrees. And same for this one, minus 30 degrees. Let's have a look. So the cards are nicely rotated. And as you can see, the center of the rotation is the center of the view. And what we would like to do now is to fan out the cards on the left side. So we would like the center of the rotation to be on the left edge of the card. And this is where we need to actually translate the origin of the transformation. So the way I'm going to do it, and this is where you see the order in which we do this transformation is going to really matter. I'm going to translate in the X axis to the left edge of the card. So I'm going to translate to card minus card width divided by two, right? We are in the middle and we want to go to this point. So half minus half the width of the card. And then I'm going to do the rotation and translate back. And I'm going to do the same for the top card, just it's a different angle. So we have a nice fan out and the center of the rotation is the left edge of the card. But you might find this uh, syntax a little bit strange because we translate to one position to go back to the position and we see that it modifies the origin of the transformation. So what is uh, really happening behind the scene? Let's have a look. So again, we have our card and these are the trans transformations we would like to apply to it. And instead of, so if I write 30 degrees rotation, this is the center of the rotation, but we would like the center of the rotation to be on the left edge of the card. So let's redo the, these three steps in order to get a better sense of what this means. Because the first time you see these instructions, you could look, since you do a translations to minus 
width divided by two, but then to go back to width divided by two, you could think that actually these two instructions cancel each other, but they are not. And this is why we put the transformations into an array because the order of in which we do the transformations really matter. So I'm gonna put back this one. So we translate to minus width divided by two. So that would be here. And then we rotate to minus 30 degrees. Here it is. And then we translate back to width divided by two. So intuitively, you might think that this translation mean this, means this. So in this case, we still rotate it to the center of uh, the view. And indeed, the translations have had no effect. But that's not what is happening. What is happening is that when we rotate here to 30 degrees, the axis also rotate to 30 degrees, minus 30 degrees, sorry. And now, if we rotate, if we translate the x-axis to width divided by two, it's not going on the horizontal direction, but it's going up to 30 degrees. And so that would give us something, oh, sorry, let me copy paste. So, I mean, I'm gonna do it approximately, but half, so you see I'm following this axis, right? And up approximately half of the card. So, I don't know, something like this. I mean, here it's not gonna be super precise, but yeah, you see that uh, looks good. And so that corresponds to the final transformation that we have here. And so this is how you transform uh, an origin in React Native. And in Redash, which is the library where I put all the helper functions that I use for uh, React Native reanimated. We have a helper function to do that. So it's called transform origin. And we can give a point for the origin. So here it's going to be x. It's going to be minus cars with divided by two. And y is going to be zero. And then we can give a sequence of transformations. So here's the transformation is the rotation. And essentially, this function is going to simply rewrite these instructions into the instructions that you see here. It's a helper function. I think it only works with animated values. So this would be animated.view. So you should only use it if, because usually here you're gonna not going to have static transformations. You're going to have like a gesture, an animation, some sort of animation value. So I can replace it with animated view. And here it is. Now I would like to show you another example where transform origin is extremely convenient. One place where I love using transform origin is with the pinch to zoom gesture and animation, because in this scenario, this is gonna dramatically improve our lives. Here I have a pinch gesture handler. You can see I can pinch to zoom. So I'm using the scale value directly, almost directly from the pinch gesture handler. I just have a, a small function to go back to one when the gesture ends. But essentially I'm using the scale value directly from the pinch gesture handler. And like for our previous transformations or for any transformations, the center of the transformation is the center of the view. So we can only scale to the middle. And the pin gesture handler gives us focal X and focal Y that we can use, that gives us the center of the pinch gesture. So we know where to translate the value. And this is where you have to scratch a little bit your head in order to calculate the translate x and translate y value that will enable you to zoom in one particular place of the image. So I spent some time calculating these two values. So I opened up Sketch, 
looked at some exa visual example and tried to... Uh, usually what I do is that I write down the value and then for some examples and then try to um, infer a generic formula in order to do it. So that's what I came up with. And it seems to work fine. So you see, I can here pinch in one, uh, one corner or the other. Um, I looked at how they do it in the reanimated image viewer. Very similar. So there is a scale top left for the X and Y. And then we can, so if the center of the scale is the top left corner of the view, so it's applied here and here, you can then apply the uh, focal X and focal Y value directly that will give us the proper translation. But this is kind of super annoying because if we use the pan gesture handler, we get translation X, translation, uh, translation Y, we can use these values directly. We set it in the transformation. We can drag the view around and we see immediately what it does. In the pin gesture handler, it's a bit different. We get these three values, scale, focal X, focal Y, but we have no way to use them directly. So we have to come up with uh, these formulas, which are not given to you, you know, if you open the pin gesture handler documentation. So wouldn't it be nice if we could use the uh, these values directly into our transform exactly like we do for the pan gesture handler. And this is where transform origin com comes in. So instead of using these two values, because we don't know, let's say, how to compute them, I'm gonna remove these two transform. We're gonna use scale. And we're simply gonna transform the origin of the scale transformation to focal X and focal Y. That's it. So we're going to use transform origin from a dash. But again, transform origin is a very simple uh, syntactic sugar. And the point we're going to give is X. So we know that this is the, the middle here is the origin of the scaling. So what we can do is we want to go back here to zero, x zero, y zero, and then add focal x, focal y. So we're gonna do minus with divided by two. So to go back to the left side, like we did in our previous example and add focal x. And we're gonna do the same for y. So y, we're going to do minus height divided by 2, and we're going to add, we need to import this function. So here, you see now I can, oops, can zoom it in any place of the image. So here we have three values from the uh, pin gesture handler that we can use uh, directly like we would do with the pin gesture handler. So that can simplify your life dramatically, especially if you want to build more features on top of the pin gesture handler, because this is a very uh, simple example. But what we want to do with the pin gesture handler is if we look at the way it's used in uh, mainstream apps is to build way more uh, complex interactions. And so to have this uh, solid uh, foundation is going to be tremendously helpful. Last but not least, let's talk about 3D transformations. This is an example we already done on the channel where we want to have a card folding onto itself. So we overlay two cards on top of each other. And we're going to rotate on the X axis. So they're gonna, they're overlaid on top of each other and they rotate one from zero to uh, 80 degrees and the bottom one to zero, uh, from zero to minus 90 degrees. And this will give us the impression 
that you have a card that is folding from the middle. So here, if I run the transformation, you see it doesn't really look like a 3D effect. And it's because the parts which are because of the X rotation that are closer to us don't look closer. And we can fix that by using the perspective transformation, which will create a field of vision and the parts which are closer to, uh, to us will look uh, bigger. So you see now how the head looks because it's getting closer to us, uh, looks much bigger and that gives us this 3D effect. And what you can see here is that our transformation goes outside the field of vision created by the perspective. So what we would like to do, so to have the full transformation is to translate on the Z axis. But uh, React Native doesn't have a translate Z transform, but we can build it ourselves. We have perspective and we have all the primitives we need to do two dimensional transformations. So, I mean, at the end of the day, this is a two dimensional canva. So given the perspective and 2D primitives, it's enough that enough primitive that we need in order to build uh, 3D transformations. And so we can build the translate uh, Z primitive ourselves it's going to be a scale transformation that depends on the perspective. And I have a, a little uh, schema here. So we have our two cards which are overlaid on top of each other. And you see, so this is viewed from the side. They are rotated on the, on the X axis. So you, this would be the Y axis. And this here would be the Z axis. So again, we're looking here from the uh, side. So it's as if I would have my phone like this. And so what we want to do is to, so we rotate these two cards and we would like to translate on the Z axis. Oops, sorry. Like this. And so from off, so here is the width of the Z translation is X that you see here. And H here is half of the height of the card. And so we can calculate X using some trigonometry. So here it is. And we can express translate Z as a scale transformation that depends on the perspective and we have translate z in as a helper function in redash so translate z we need to pass the perspective and the value of the translation which we have calculated here so that's this formula here which we get through trigonometry because we have a uh, rectangle, um, triangle here, you see here. So we can simply apply the translate Z transformation and here it is. So now it translates on the Z, Z axis nicely. So React Native gives us all the primitives in order to build any kind of 3D transformations. And yeah, you could wonder, oh, but why is there not a translate Z primitive? But we have all the primitives uh, that we need. We need two dimensional primitives plus the perspective. I mean, at the end, the Canva is a two dimensional Canva. So uh, that should be enough to, to express any kind of transformations. If you like this topic of gestures and animations in React Native, I, of course, recommend that you check out my online course at startreactnative.dev. My goal with this course is to provide you with all the tools and knowledge necessary in order to build 
incredible user experiences in React Native that will run at 60 FPS even on lower-end Android devices. Hopefully, while following this curriculum, the recipes we use in the Can It Be Done React Native series should feel trivial to you. So if you're interested to harness the fundamentals of gestures and animations in React Native, I recommend that you check it out at startreactnative.dev. Guys, I hope you enjoyed these examples. I'm looking forward to talk to you soon. And in the meantime, happy hacking.